All right. <clears throat> Have you ever been in an argument where the other guy just doesn't consider any in-depth answer? He's just philosophical, doesn't get into details. That's what I have in this article. In the fonts, uh, in the study, that uh, he inside inside the the uh, brackets are my comments, and on the outside, I try to color the fonts, but it, the uh, YouTube doesn't allow that to be broadcast. But you can look at the article, and here's up here is, is the article flagellum unspun, not HTM. <clears throat> you can go online. I guess I could put this into this. And you go online, and here is the t title of the article. I think I'll have it under. Do I have it under the letter F? I just wanted to see. I think I have it under Darwin. Oh, well, let me just see flagellum. Yeah, I mean, who would look up? something under flagellum. I don't think I listed it. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, under flagella. There it is. Bacteria flagella, irreducible complex CD, indicates an intelligent design. And then I have, that's the article we just looked at before this one that I'm looking at now. And then flagella, bacterial, bacteria flagellum refuted by evolutionists and then re rebutted by creationists, which is me. That's the article, and he's he gives. It's like being at a, at a, a fraternity meeting or something. These aren't scientific. Kenneth Miller is not scientific. He may be a scientist, but he's not being scientific in this article. And I refuted them here in brackets. So that's where I am. Uh, you should read this article because you recognize the evolutionist way of approaching it, and he he just brushes aside any evidence and say, well, that, that could have evolved, that could have evolved, that could have, but it couldn't have evolved because the bacteria has to have all those mechanisms in working order now to survive, and there's no species intermediate before it or after it. So there's no evidence that it evolved. There's only evidence that somehow this thing was in working order the first time it appeared on the planet. And we never addressed, oh, that could have, that could have taken a lot of time. But show me some evidence, not even maybe bacteria, which is pretty simple uh, instead of mammals or other uh, life forms that aren't so microscopic and they have far more complex systems. And, and they're larger. <coughs> How does that happen? It, it, doesn't, it, does, it doesn't matter. It's always, it'll always take time. We've, and they, they thought they found intermediate species or mechanisms <clears throat> that there was a partial mechanism. I, I remember a study where there's a partial mechanism, but it worked. And there was another mechanism over here that it worked in a, in a lesser way. But those mechanisms were also working firsthand. Each one of those mechanisms are complex in itself. Have you ever heard, <coughs> have you ever heard of DNA? Well, you know, bacteria. <coughs> How do they reproduce? Who invented the DNA? That's even more complex than the systems by which these things, bacteria or other animals, life forms, plants, how they survive, how they eat, <coughs> and everything else. But how do they reproduce? And what system establishes how it reproduces a like kind and with all the mechanisms in working order? Wow. How'd you do that? Anyway, we're looking at the utility of the bacterial flagellum is that it seems to rise above this argument from ignorance. That's an insult. By asserting that it is a structure in which the removal of an element would cause the whole system to cease functioning. Behe says that in 2002 in his book, The Darwin's Black Box. The flagellum is presented as a molecular machine whose individual parts must have been specifically crafted to work as a unified assembly. He's just repeating what is true, that, that that's Behe's observation under the microscope, whose individual parts must have been specifically crafted to work as a unified assembly. Who did that? Sounds like a designer. And it could be. You can't rule out with your one... Oh, it took a long time to evolve, but you don't know that. You weren't there. Why not an alternative consider an intelligent designer? 
The existence of such a multi-part machine therefore provides genuine scientific proof of the actions of an intelligent designer. He's saying that. He's saying that like this doesn't exist. This is just that doesn't necessarily happen. Well, it could. Have you tested this scientifically? No. Or are you limiting yourself to what you believe? I did not read of any evidence that you took away some of the elements from an active bacteria to see if it would still work. The idea of going to another species with a similar design of flagellum, but which does not have the precise components of the first species, and comparing them is bad science. Yeah, I just mentioned that. This other thing has a similar design with flagella and works differently, but it works. But how do you go from one that How do you take uh, an automobile and convert it to a tractor trailer? You know? Well, one didn't evolve into the other. It looks like two separate designs. Could be. He won't, he won't entertain that. The idea of going to another species with a similar design of flagellum, but which does not have the precise components of the first species, and comparing them is bad science. Each species has its own design. Albeit some species might have a similar design, but not the same design. Hence, comparison is not legitimate. It doesn't, it's not a, it's not an intermediate species. It does other things in a different way with a similar design, but not the same. <clears throat> he goes on to say, in the case of the flagellum, the assertion of irreducibly complex, irreducible complexity means that a minimum number of protein components, perhaps 30, are required to produce a working biological function. By the logic of irreducible complexity, these individual components should have no function until all 30 are put into place, at which point the function of motility appears. And I, I said, no, within the same species did you do this test. You know, uh, you know, uh, elephants have a, a fourth, they have a trunk, right? Um, and I have two arms, similar kind of operation. Um, so you say they both, the, the, one could have evolved into another. Do I look like an elephant? There are a lot of things about the elephant and the human being that are different from one another. An operating species, similar elements in similar things, similar functions. And if somebody were a Martian and they come down and see all this traffic, tractor trailers and small automobiles, large automobiles, bicycles, whatever, and they say, yeah, see, one evolved into another. No, we see them manufactured in separate factories from scratch. And we don't see that one, uh, you know, the things, different species of tractor trailers and cars and trucks doesn't mean that one evolved into another. That's bad science. What this means, of course, is that evolution could not have fashioned these components a few at a time since they do not have functions that could be favored by natural selection. Again, within the same species, did you do this test? As Behe wrote, natural selection can only choose among systems that are already working. And an irreducibly complex system does not work unless all of its parts are in place. So, I, I don't operate unless I have my second arm. Elephants operate, they got four legs. Two could be arms, but they don't stand upright. Sometimes they do. And then they have the trunk that does even more. Um, you're just comparing two different species, not how I could have evolved. So I'm a complete species with my two arms. So Behe wrote, natural selection can only choose among systems that are already working. And an irreducibly complex system does not work unless all of its parts are in place. So you look at the specific species and then say, okay, if I take the flagellum off this one side or the ability for the flagellum to rotate around and operate in a, a lot of different ways, um, that species wouldn't survive. You're not looking at another species of bacteria and say, say, it operates on a different organization. Yes, but all those things were in place. That's what I'm trying to say. So the flagellum is irreducibly complex. And therefore, it must have been designed. Case closed. He's being sarcastic here. For that particular species is obviously implied. So, answering the argument.
So he's now answering the argument. Here it is. The assertion that cellular machines are irreducibly complex and therefore provide proof of design has not gone unnoticed by the scientific community. A number of detailed rebuttals have appeared in the literature, and many have pointed out the poor reasoning of recasting the classic argument from design in the modern language of biochemistry. Well, you use the language of biochemistry about biochemistry things. I have suggested elsewhere, he says, that the scientific literature contains counterexamples to any assertive assertion that evolution cannot explain biochemical complexity. Now you're switching subjects. Let's just look at biochemical. How do these bacteria survive if it's only coming comes in partial and most of the flagella are on one side or all of them? And other workers have addressed the issue of how evolutionary mechanisms allow biological systems to increase in information content. I've looked at those. You use more information to produce something in science, but you still use that information. You use it in machines, and so on. So the most powerful rebuttals to the flagellum story, however, have not come from direct attempts to answer the critics of evolution. Rather, they have emerged from the steady progress of scientific work and the genes and proteins associated with the flagellum and other cellular structures. Such studies have now established that the entire premise by which this molecular machine has been advanced as an argument against evolution is wrong. Are you going to tell me how? The bacteria flagellum is not irreducibly complex. Here's my answer. So far, within the same species, i.e. within the, this particular bacterial flagellum, it appears to work properly only when all the observable parts are in place. He's never answered that. Take away a part. Or you can look at the parts and see how they operate, but how those parts all they get together at the same time. And then how does the bacteria reproduce? That is all, after all the implications, we are not comparing apples and oranges or even Macintosh apples with green apples, are we? So he answers, as we, as we will see, the flagellum, the supreme example of the power of this new science of design, has failed its most basic scientific test. What is that? Remember the claim that any precursor to an irreducibly complex system that is missing a part is by definition non-functional. Well, he's never taken apart the bacteria and see how it can work, the particular species. Again, I say within the same species. Am I repeating myself here? Take a human being with a complete, effectively working blood clotting system and compare it with another human being, known as same species, who has hemophilia, which indicates a defective blood clotting system, i.e. all the components are not in the proper functioning capacity. Now you have a problem with the irreducible co complexity because not all the components are functioning properly. This means it might be attributable to a bad stage of evolution or to the decision of an intelligent designer who because of his judgment upon sinful man. So if that person has hemophilia, and he, he could bleed to death. Now we have modern scientific things to go along to stop him from dying. Medicines to take, right? But what in real life, if we don't have those things to repair uh, an irreducibly complex being like humans, they come away with defection. How about cancer? On the other hand, you cannot compare the blood clotting system of a human being with that of a dolphin, as you have done in this article, and thereby declare something conclusive because the species dolphin is quite different from the species humankind, sufficient to make a comparison inadequate to com conclude that the evolution is in view or an intelligent designer is in view. Actually, intelligent designer can be in view regardless. So a dolphin has a different blood clotting system that apparently is has some things that are missing in the component of a human's blood clotting system. But the dolphin works. If it's missing a component that you see in the dolphin, it will die. Just like the person with hemophilia, if they cut themselves, they'll bleed to death. Because the blood clotting system isn't working right. So I say, as he says, as the evidence has shown, nature is filled with examples of precursors to the flagellum that are indeed missing a part and yet are fully functional. A dolphin didn't evolve into a human. We see